It is sunrise in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, so we are strapping up our six vessel cameras. Right now we are about 140 west, 33.23 north. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, four or five days away from any land. The Megatrol is out, the Mantatrol, the drones are up in the sky. Uh, we've got visual surveys going on, all the GoPros are running, so for now everything seems like it's working well. It's bridge, bridge, everything is deployed, everything is deployed. This expedition is called uh, the Grand Truth Expedition and what we're trying to do here is to uh, Grand Truth or remote sensing method. So um, we developed different ways of observing plastic using cameras either from drones or from vessels. What we need to do is to make sure that those methods are accurate. And so we compare basically our observation with samples that we collect directly in the water so we get the truth from the ground so that's what ground truth thing is about basically we've been conducting quite a lot of research already particularly in the north pacific here but um going forward uh, obviously we cannot do that all the time all year long in every ocean so we're trying to find methods to monitor plastic pollution at global scale and systematically over time so to do this we we developed that camera system that uh, basically takes a lot of images of the sea surface and we have a, an artificial intelligence algorithm that can detect all the different debris. And once this is working well, we want to, to scale up basically and try to deploy those in different vessels going basically all around the world and we can basically build like global maps over time of plastic pollution accumulation. Every GoPro that we attach to a ship's railing is taking about 130,000 pictures a day. So um, even that in and of itself is like an insane amount of, of data that we can now bring back to our remote sensing lead. And definitely, I think that's a really scalable technology. The biggest kind of advantage of using drones like this is that they allow you to get an aerial perspective of the water and of all the plastic at a high resolution. What the tether does is it basically feeds power through that cable to the drone so you can fly in theory indefinitely. So since for this particular mission, we're basically just cruising along with the boat, taking pictures of plastic as it flows by, we don't have to go very far. So the goal is to get as much data as possible. And what we can do is feed the data into an algorithm that can search through the water photographs for bits of plastic and then catalog a volume of how much plastic we think is passing the boat before it goes into the trawl. The biggest limitation is the fact that it's very hard to process the data in real time. A lot of the plastic is hard to detect on, basically you're watching the live feed through a little screen, it's hard to detect on that screen. But as the camera quality gets better, as the live feed gets better, and as our ability to identify plastic real time improves, I think that technology has huge potential to go find hot spots. Once you go in, in the, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, it's, it's quite striking actually because you're sailing for maybe four or five days and the first few days when you leave um, the uh, North American coastline, you don't see anything or just really barely like one or two objects uh, floating here and there. But like from one day to another, you actually start to see a lot. And so there's, there's quite a very strict boundary to, to the time you you know you, you enter this, this accumulation zone. But once you're in the accumulation zone, like debris is not sort of homogeneously distributed. There's no plastic island, right? It's it's kind of dispersed all over. But then what we notice is that 
on, on large and small scale, you actually notice that debris is more or less concentrated. So you will see some sort of little patch passing through the vessel. And, and that's what we call hotspots. We're trying to understand how those, those debris sort of accumulate at, at smaller scale. So during this expedition, we had our crew back on, back on land in Rotterdam that were running numerical models on a daily basis and giving us reports of where we thought uh, we could uh, find like hot spots of plastics. And, and it's really important that we, we try to understand this because if we are able to predict the formation of those hot spots, then we can give this information to our cleanup system and operation offshore. And, and obviously that will uh, make our cleanup much more efficient, will save on time, on cost, on energy. So this is what we're trying to chase. It's always surprising to see how much plastic we find in our our nets on a micro scale. Like the, the macro plastic you kind of see from the, from the bridge or from the deck, but unless you're in the water or you're sampling with a net that's designed to sample microplastics, you, you have no idea how much really small stuff is floating around in the, in the water around you. And I think that's, that always just blows my mind that after 30 minutes you can come back with a full like cod end of your net that's just like filled with this very depressing confetti. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a, it, it leaves a bad feeling because you, you know that the problem is so much bigger than we can actually visualize. And then I think we're uh, continuously kind of curious about to sample for microplastics and nanoplastics at depth. So we're lowering down pumps with a very fine mesh and pump for, uh, for microplastics and nanoplastics and see whether the, the fragmenting, the continuous fragmentation of, of larger objects is resulting in the smaller objects kind of sinking to lower parts of the water column. All right. This is gonna go 2.5 kilometers down, which is as much wire rope as we have, so pretty deep. Well, we've got quite some work now, like this, this was the fun part, being on the ground, but uh, obviously there's, there's two components. We have to, um, to go through the samples we collected, so that means we're going to have to uh, count and weight and, and classify all the different plastic particles and plastic objects we collected with our trolls. And at the same time, we'll have to go through all the footage uh, we collected uh, with our cameras. So obviously the idea is to, to make some estimate of concentration, but also try to, to compare the different concentration estimated by um, the cameras and by the trolls and see if, if, if we get similar results. I'm, I'm just really curious. We don't, I can say from like a tactile experience how much plastic I think is out here at a time, but of course we have all of these techniques that aren't tactile. That's their like, by definition, they're supposed to be you know, kind of removed from that. So I'm interested to see both whether we can see all the same plastic as we actually caught in our nets, and if the, the way that we process those images is, yeah, reliable enough that we can say like, oh look, there's that crate that the drone picked up and the GoPros picked up and we caught with the, with the Megatrol. You know, that would, be, that would be awesome. That's something that I'm hoping to see. <laughs>